It was in the middle of a push-up set that I had that moment of dysphoria flood me with throat-gripping anxiety. My triceps were burning when I caught a glimpse of myself in the full-length mirror that I never bothered to mount to the wall, just as my chest brushed against the smooth wood floor. My chest. Two lumps of tissue that had once been appealing and now were suddenly dead weight, trapped in the back of my mouth, a silent cry of disgust. I was a proud, queer, feminist woman until my 30s. When I came out to my friends and family as genderqueer, it was because I suddenly found that the word woman no longer sounded right on my tongue. I wasn't a woman, but neither was I a man. I was something else, androgynous, other. <laughs> I just, I don't wanna get surgery, I insisted. I like my breasts. I just don't wanna be read as a woman. So I learned to bind my chest. Once a secret art shared by word of mouth and now plastered all over Tumblr. <laughs> In a hushed conversation with a friend, I discovered I could hide by layering two tight sports bras beneath a couple of boys' undershirts. But it wasn't enough. I could see the lumps and they would stress me out. Some months later, I nervously awaited delivery of my first purchased binder, a torture device made of triple thick compression material into which I wrangled first one shoulder, then the other, barely able to breathe after I'd managed to drag the bunched contraption over the shelf of my double D breasts. It took several attempts to squish my uncooperative flesh first down and then out to the sides. Beauty is pain, I reminded myself as I looked in the mirror at my flat-ish profile. The binder rubbed the skin beneath my arms raw until I took to wearing one of those boys' undershirts beneath it. Beads of sweat soaked me under this three-layer minimum dress code. But with an appropriately patterned shirt to distract the eye, I found it comforting when people had to look twice, stuttering over themselves. Thank you, sir. I mean, ma'am as they handed, my, handed me my cup of coffee. My heart positively skipped for joy when I attended a meeting and the consultant asked my colleague if it's legal for them to hire teenage boys. <laughs> my waist was still narrower than my hips and those binders would snap up like rolling blinds, a boa constrictor, bruising my ribs, making me run to the restroom hourly to untuck my shirt and desperately push it back down when I couldn't take it any longer. Once more, the secret online world of trans tricks yielded a discovery. Shirt stays. <laughs> ah, yes. I got a set at the Army-Navy surplus store in North Park and finally managed to attach the bottom clip to my sock and the top clip to my binder. <laughs> the strap remaining hidden as long as I wore long pants. Of course, we live in San Diego. <laughs> so I promptly got smacked in the face with a recoiling elastic band. And every once in a while, the clasp at the top, which was designed to hold a dress shirt taut, um, but not a thick binder, would fall off and I'd have a coiled suspender dripping out the bottom of my pant leg. For years, I stuffed myself into these sausage casings, avoiding shorts as often as I could, bruising of the interstitial muscles in my rib cage and back pain became my daily self-flagellation in service to the binder gods. I stopped working out because I couldn't breathe deeply enough to run a fraction of my daily three miles in a binder. And the thought of going beyond my door without one would send me off into a panic attack. The pressure on my abdomen gave me a permanent case of reflux and a daily medication schedule. Eventually my breast tissue gave up, 
resisting and mostly lay flat, except on the days when I needed to be somewhere important. Then it became a battle of wills that I usually lost. I look in the mirror after trying to push them down every way I could and still see the bulges. Stifling a dizzying crest of rip-roaring dysphoria, I'd strip all my clothes off and have to start again, unable to talk myself rational. It wasn't enough. People still mostly thought I was a butch lesbian. Not the little old lady working the tasting room at a vineyard in Temecula. She thought I was a sweet young man. But grabbing a coffee in Hillcrest was inevitably accompanied by the triumphant look from a barista when he asked, what can I get for you, ma'am? As if to say, you look masculine, but I know you're really a lady. It wasn't anywhere near enough. I decided after a year of internal debate to start taking testosterone, a three-month process to get a prescription at the clinic. I didn't want to go bald or get a hairy chest, or God forbid, a hairy back. <laughs> but maybe I could live with it if my body shape changed and my voice lowered. I knew muscle and fat would redistribute, and maybe that would be enough. I still thought I'd keep my chest. Maybe if I had a beard, I could even stop wearing a binder and really bend gender. Maybe that was a way to look gender queer. So I stabbed myself in the thigh each week with a syringe full of testosterone suspended in thick oil. Slowly, my body began to change. First came the constant arousal, insatiable and frustrating. Next came hunger like nothing I'd ever felt. Finding myself standing with the fridge door open, drinking milk out of the carton, with a suddenly urgent need for protein right now. <laughs> I hate milk. Then my skin texture changed and my voice lowered like a guitar being tuned. My big boy voice was awkward. I had to learn how to call for my dog. Razzy, come here. <clears throat> Raz, get over here. <laughs> Finally, after five months, my menstrual cycle stopped. I was always a proud user of the cup, pumping my air in solidarity <laughs> with uh, other women and uteruses in general. But let me tell you, I was so glad to get rid of it. I got facial hair that most closely resembled an Amish neckbeard. <sighs> and then the chest hair started. One day I saw a hair on my shoulder and then two on my back. My vanity was crushed. But after eight months, people mostly stopped referring to me as she. Of course, I was still being misgendered, only now as a man. It was a relief to know that people no longer looked at my body and saw a woman. My shoulders broadened with changing musculature. My hips narrowed as fat crept to my belly. I was at peace. My chest was there, but other than the pain of binding, my breasts and I cohabitated amicably. Until those push-ups. That moment when I felt my chest skimming the hardwood floor and every nerve ending fired off screaming, oh fuck no, those two gobs of flesh did not belong there. That's when the real battle began the one with the medical system and gatekeepers. Within a couple months of having my aha moment, the state of California sent out a letter to insurance companies telling them they now finally had to comply with the 2006 law requiring that they stop discriminating against trans people. I was ecstatic. A copy of the letter in law in hand, I went to the doctor, a woman I drove all the way out to Coronado for because another trans person said she was accepting. I sat in the examining room explaining I was ready for top surgery and that she would need to write a letter approving me. She said, you know what I usually tell women who want plastic surgery is to learn to get over it and love themselves. I'm not sure what she said after that, 
because I left the office in a cloud of fury and shame. It took me months before I found the energy to get a new doctor, one with a clue. The only problem was that I'd have to switch medical groups. The perky insurance rep told me it would take two months for that change to finalize. But in the meantime, I could just keep seeing my current doctor. I practically shouted into the phone that I most certainly could not see that doctor ever again. Only after being forced to disclose that I was trans did she suddenly realize that she could move the process along a little faster. The new doctor gave me a list of some possible local surgeons and I did my due diligence, calling each one and unsurprisingly finding out that they had no experience with the type of procedure I needed. My doc agreed to make a referral to an out-of-network surgeon in San Francisco and we waited and waited. Neither the surgeon's office nor the insurance company had seen it. Turned out, my medical group hadn't bothered to send it on because they knew it wasn't covered. So once again, I sent over the legal documents proving their ignorance. The letter finally arrived in the mail and I ripped it open, my heart pounding until I saw what it said, declined. They wouldn't cover my surgeon. Instead, they approved me with a local guy who had listed transgender surgery on his website. I called his office. I'm transgender and need surgery to have my chest removed, I said to the receptionist. Oh yes, the doctor can remove implants, that's not a problem. After several minutes of confusion, I realized that she thought I was a transgender woman who had already had top surgery to augment my breasts. Further questioning revealed that in her 16 years with that surgeon, he had only performed a handful of the double mastectomies on people assigned female at birth. Nope, no way was I gonna put my chest in his hands. I filed a formal appeal, testifying that my mental and physical health was spiraling down the longer I waited for this surgery. Every day became a struggle. I could no longer look in a mirror, and showering was unbearable. Some weeks later, another letter appeared in my mail. Appeal to cover my surgeon denied. But this time, I could go to a guy in Beverly Hills who, for no reason, required many more letters from a psychiatrist as well as a therapist and doctor. The tears wouldn't come. Everything disintegrated around me. I'd have to make a choice to go to a doctor I felt terrible about or live with this chest. I was choking on the choice. It took a year and a half since I began the process, and the afternoon that the bandages came off, I was ready. Ready to be rid of the constricting surgical binder that kept my swelling down. Ready to breathe easily for the first time in years. Ready to wear deep V t-shirts and tank tops. Ready to feel released. What I wasn't ready for, was the man's body staring back at me in the mirror. A body that didn't look like mine anymore. It wasn't genderqueer in the way it had been. I barely recognized myself. I expected joy, thrilling ecstatic happiness to be rid of these weights. I mostly felt relief that I didn't completely hate how I looked. I 